This video brought to you by the Lee and Dunn Group from Baird. Welcome to Time with Ty, where we focus on mastering the rhythms of life, parenting, and sobriety. I'm Ty, and I have some free meditations on my website, tyalana.com, that will just help you a little bit further along on your spiritual development, or maybe just help you to calm down a little bit. As always, let's get started with a 60 second meditation, straightening your spine, closing your eyes and taking a deep breath in. And coming back from your meditation, taking a deep breath in, breathing out. Every week I am reminding us loves to keep hydrating. So grab that glass of water, taking a water break, hydrating our bodies, good for our minds, our brains, and our souls as well. Today, my loves, I am talking to you about something pretty uncomfortable humility. There is a beautiful phrase that I heard in a program of recovery that humility is what we experience. Let me think about this. Humiliation is what we experience when we don't submit to humility. So humility for me is one of those super interesting things in which I think for the most part that I run pretty humble. That's kind of my default. But then I come into situations where a huge, enormous dose of humility is asked of me. And I realize that it is like exercising. If you have not trained for a marathon ever, and then someone asks you to run a half marathon, wow. So I love it because recently I was faced with a very intense situation in my personal life that asked of me an enormous amount of humility. Uncomfortable, um, humiliating almost to a certain degree. Uh, it might edge on shame. For me, the situation that I was in required me to ask people for, for help. It required me to ask something of somebody that I was not able, that my family and I, my husband and I were not able to provide ourselves. So to stop being mysterious about it, I think I might have mentioned before that our youngest son, who is eight and a half, is a really, really talented mountain biker. And this kid has worked so hard. He, His coaches have been telling him for the past two years, you are ready to compete. And as a first grader, he was not allowed to compete. The rules were that you had to be in fourth grade or higher. So long story short, last year, his really amazing lead coach advocated for him and for younger kids all around that are talented enough and ready and technically skilled enough to compete at the fourth grade level. So my son was invited to the race team. He has a clunky old hardtail bike and in mountain biking speak, that means that it does not have a dual suspension. Um, so that comes with it its own challenges. I could go really deep into mountain biking gear speak now because I'm well versed as a mom of a mountain biker, but for our intents and purposes, I will just tell you that he has not had the bike that he needed or that would help him progress. And he raced all year on this clunky, heavy old bike that his coaches got to the point of said, we feel like it might be getting dangerous if he comes really high and hard off a jump, like he could break that bike. And we know that watching a kid sail 
six feet or higher in the air and come down on, on a bike and have it break is definitely not ideal. I think everybody would agree to that. So my husband and I um, knew we were at the point where we needed to get a new bike for him. And a new mountain bike, entry level, standard, run of the mill, nothing special or fancy, dual suspension bike, runs around $1,800. And for our family, this was not something that we had funds to commit to. And we also, to be candid, are a cash family, which means we do not put money on credit cards. We do not purchase things that we can't afford to buy. So I had a genius aperture, much prayer and meditation. I had a genius idea one night that I was going to approach the bike companies directly. Our older son, who is a producer, who produces this show every week for us, put together a beautiful little montage of his wins, how many times he had been on the podium, how he trains at home, what he's what he had, has been willing and able to do with the tiny amount of resources that he has. And we put together a very compelling letter and we sent it off to the bike company who will remain unnamed <laughs> because they never answered us um, for this plea for a bike. After two weeks, three weeks, we realized that this isn't happening um, actually by fate. And when you put things out in the universe, this is a perfect example of asking for help. When you put things out in the universe, I started talking about how we needed this bike, how we were approaching bike companies, what we were doing. And a very good friend of mine who produced the music for this show actually said, the person that owns a very large and a very professional race course of mountain bikers happens to be my neighbor. I've never spoken to the person, but I will walk across the street with your letter and your plea and I will ask him for help. This man, sight unseen, not knowing me, not knowing my son, not knowing our family, agreed to push our letter really high up in the ranks of some uh, professionals and officials that run the mountain biking company that we were approaching for a bike. Unfortunately, it didn't work. So we knew that we were left to our own devices. Take out a loan for a mountain bike, not attractive for our family. Put it on credit, not something we're willing to do. Um, we just, it's, it's not a smart financial move for us. And we try to steward our finances very, very um, carefully. Our son, our older son said, let's do a GoFundMe. And I was like, are you serious? And my husband was absolutely against it because tell a man that, tell the world that you can't afford something from your children that they want and that they need really to help them progress in competitively in the sport that they're in. Not attractive, not happening. I overrode my husband's um, hesitancy and his uh, I can't think of the word in English, support of Lenny, his resistance. I overrode his resistance and I championed for our son. And let's see, about 12 days ago, we opened up a GoFundMe and we sent it out just to our closest people. And I am happy to say that, very emotional, happy to say that yesterday we were able to purchase for him the mountain bike of his dreams and support his racing for at least the next year and a half, two years going forward because we smartly bought a bike that will transition from 24 inches to 26 inches. I tell you that whole story, friends, to say that stepping outside of your comfort zone, asking for what you need, being willing to believe in yourself or the person or the company or the group of kids that you're working for, that you're championing for, that you've opened a nonprofit for, that you're volunteering for, maybe it's somebody in your neighborhood. And it's not just about children, it's about adults, it's about elders, it's about animals, it's about the environment. Whatever you're passionate about, whatever you believe in, it may be asked of you to come to a place of humility, a place of where you say, I don't have this. I don't have enough. I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. Asking for help is the most uncomfortable thing, one of the most uncomfortable things that I that I could ever do. I don't like to do it. I don't like imagining doing it. I don't even like talking about it, but I'm sharing this very personal, humbling story with you to let you know that miracles do occur. Asking for, well, for help is not a sign of weakness or that you're not good enough. It means that We've come to a place in our life in which to progress, we need to be vulnerable. We need to be willing to say, I don't have this. I need help. 
and I'm worthy or whoever I'm championing for is worthy enough to receive it. Super simple lesson, super hard pill to swallow, but very worthy, very worthy and very timely because I feel like there's so much going on in the world now and wherever you are, whoever you are and whatever you're working for needs your help, needs your energy, needs your strength and don't give up, please be that champion, be that rock, be that advocate for that person, place, or thing that you so deeply believe in. Maybe it's the desire of your own heart. Don't give up on yourself. It will work. One way or another, at some point in time, it will work, my friends. I love you so much. I wish you the most beautiful weekend, and I will see you next week. Enjoy your fireworks.